Hi everyone, Nemo here. This image has been doing the rounds lately. It is claimed to be the first authenticated image of the founder of the Latter-day Saint movement, Joseph Smith Jr. The impact of the discovery of this image by Joseph Smith's great-great-grandson, Dan Larson, goes far beyond the Brighamite sect of the LDS movement, into all facets of Mormonism, because they all trace their start to Joseph Smith. This makes it a pretty big find. Apparently, during lockdown, while tidying through some family heirlooms, Dan Larson found this daguerreotype in a locket. Given how this photo differs in some ways to Brighamite depictions of Joseph Smith, Ooh. it's naturally been a point of controversy. It's been used by some to update the images and perceptions of Joseph Smith. Here, for example, we have our closest possible idea of what he would have looked like on his wedding day to 14-year-old Helen Mark Kimball. But of course, there are some who remain adamant that this is not a picture of Joseph Smith. And I understand this. The image we are now seeing does not match popular representations of Joseph Smith in Brighamite Mormonism. So the skeptics are using his death mask to say it doesn't look like him, or looks more like Hiram due to Hiram's squarer jaw. But the rebuttals to these denials hold some weight too. An image overlay with the death mask seems to show a decent match. However, what is important to note regarding death masks is that, as far as I understand it, they would apply weight to the face as they're casting the facial structure. And if this face has no muscle tone because the person is dead, I can imagine this weight plus gravity acting on a deceased supine person's face will not always render it the most accurate impression beyond their bone structure. Any experts feel free to correct me on that in the comments. Those who say this daguerreotype is Joseph Smith point to similarities between portraits and the daguerreotype itself, such as the presence of a crease on the face of both men. And two years of research and highly sophisticated facial recognition software can't exactly be ignored. The Deseret News explains some of the authentication process. McKay said they use methods such as facial recognition software to compare the daguerreotype with Smith's 1842 oil portrait, attributed to artist David Rogers, and with his death mask. They use methods like photographic overlays and cutaways, as well as extensive historical research. John Rees writes that they hired facial recognition experts to compare the daguerreotype to Smith's death mask. The company reported back that 19 of 21 measured features matched within a 95% confidence interval. And what has the Brighamite sect of Mormonism based in Utah been saying about all of this? We concur that the daguerreotype and locket were created of the materials and methods appropriate to the 1840s. However, as nothing is definitively known about the locket's history before 1992, we cannot draw a conclusion about who is pictured in the daguerreotype. We welcome the recent publication of the image and hope it will prompt the discovery of additional information helpful to determining its authenticity. The church's reaction here has led one Redditor to create this. Revelation in the 1800s? He was a white Lamanite named Zelf. Revelation in the 2000s? I have no idea who this guy is. While slightly oversimplistic of the situation, it is true that ever since Mark Hoffman completely undermined the prophetic gift of discernment, the LDS Church are understandably reluctant to affirm the claims that this picture is indeed of Joseph Smith Jr. They wouldn't want to get caught up defending another white salamander only to find out that it wasn't true. And before I tell you why I think this picture matters, I want to hear why you think it matters in the comments. And while you're down there, hit the like button. And if you think I've earned it, hit subscribe too. So why does it matter? Well, Joseph Smith is one of the most well-documented religious founders in the world, and yet, possibly until now, no picture of him has ever existed. This serves to create a certain mysticism around him, as though, like Jesus, Buddha, or Guru Ram Das, we can't really know what happened in his lifetime. This can be leveraged by apologists to create uncertainty on matters of historical fact which are damning to Joseph Smith's character and claims. Were this picture to be proven authentic, which in my opinion I feel it pretty much has been, then that would serve to ground Joseph Smith firmly as a real historical figure in this sense, and therefore, hopefully, allow the historical facts of his life to pervade the current narrative taught by the LDS Church. Hopefully one of the next artefacts currently missing to the annals of time that we'll see is the 116 lost pages. And if that happens, I'll meet you right back here and we'll talk all about it. Mm -hmm.